Arena in Keenan State. The Tar Heels Sports Network's coverage of the 21st meeting between Florida State and Carolina starts right now. on the roll things are good and i'm i'm excited about it i mean we're all holding ourselves now to a super high standard we've got the leadership we prepare the same way for every team uh, you know no game is bigger than, than another we've got the confidence i feel like now nobody can't stay with me and it just rolls into practice if you're seeing it in practice it's going to show up in the game i embrace the challenge honestly i did not got to keep on going i'm be coming down you know making plays you know anticipate things more you know, it's, it's only going to keep getting better we're going to be good every year that's just who we are we that's our program this is Carolina football. Coffrey off to the races, and they will not catch him. Touchdown, Carolina. How? First down and more. How to the five. How to the end zone. 40, 35, 30. Tar Heels will have it inside the Deacon 15. 25, 20, 10, 5. Trucks over a defender. Goodness gracious. 50, 10, 5. Give him 6, 4. Holy smokes. This is Jones Angel. Last week against Duke, Carolina had what Mac Brown described as the best defensive performance since he's been back in Chapel Hill. Carolina looks to build off that quality performance against the dangerous Florida State team in Keenan Stadium this afternoon. Talking about big time defense, Brian Simmons, two time All America at Carolina, has his jersey honored at UNC, played a decade in the NFL. And quite simply today, consistency and revenge are the two words that's on the table. And let's see if Carolina can make that happen. Which Tar Heel team shows up today? Lee Pace authors extra points and will be reporting from the potentially soggy sidelines this afternoon. Florida State entered the ACC in 1992, and the Tar Heels since then are 3-14 and 14 against the Seminoles. Miami joined the club in 2004, and Carolina actually has the better hand, winning 9 and losing 8. Now, for the first time ever, these two traditional football powerhouses from the Sunshine State come to Keenan Stadium on successive Saturdays. What an opportunity for Mac Brown and the Tar Heels. We'll have all those storylines to talk about, plus interviews with the head coaches, Mac Brown and Mike Norvell. We'll continue our weekly conversations with Carolina great Jeff Saturday. Check on scores from a busy day in the top 25 in the ACC. And, boy, just that and a whole lot more. we got to get you ready for this bad boy. It's Florida State at Carolina. The Reese Jewelers pregame show from Learfield. Everyone has.
Good afternoon. Great to be back with you. Great to be in Keenan Stadium, Carolina and Florida State kicking off just about an hour from now. We're going to get you ready for the 21st meeting between the Seminoles and the Tar Heels. It's the Reeds Jewelers pregame show brought to you by Reeds Jewelers, your hometown jeweler trusted for generations. Maybe you're watching us as well on the Carolina football field pass brought to you by Wells Fargo. That's out there in social media land, Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, and more. Thanks for joining us no matter how you are doing it today. Jones, Brian, Lee, we're all here along with Ben Alexander, our chief network engineer. You're going to hear from Dave Nathan coming up in just a little bit. Jody Zordner, our statistician. John Essek back in our Tar Heel Sports Network studio. Let's get to it. Brian, 38-7, the final score a week ago. Carolina just kind of suffocated Duke with what Mac Brown called the best defensive effort since his return to Chapel Hill. Carolina stopped the run for the most part. There were one or two big plays in that, in that way, but for the most part, stopped the run, forced turnovers, got off the field on third down, and made disruptive plays in the backfield. That is a recipe the Heels would love to replicate today and moving forward. And I agree with the coach. I thought last week was a very good performance. And anytime you, like you said, uh, Jones, if you could stop the run, force turnovers, and get off the field on third down, you're going to have success on defense. And now let's see if we can start replicating that from game to game. And that's the big question. We all know Carolina can do that. They have the, like we talked about last week, they have the skill set to do that. They have the players. The scheme is in place. The kids should know the scheme really well at this point. Now the consistency should start showing up. And let's see if Carolina can take a step in that direction today. And, Brian, that third down aspect went both ways. Not only did the Tar Heels limit Duke to 13%, third down conversions but they also converted nearly 50 percent themselves so combination of both sides of the ball working well off one another to keep the ball moving down the field on offense and to get off the field on defense defensively last two games and that's even that that ugly performance in georgia tech carolina's opponents five of 26 on third down the last two games so the tariels have done a nice job in that area here as of late Lee, offensively, Carolina put up 31 points because, remember, there was a defensive touchdown. So 31 offensive points, more than 450 yards in the win over Duke, and yet Carolina allowed 10 tackles for loss and five more sacks, bringing the season total to 22 sacks allowed. Heels are doing some good things on offense, but also still a lot of things to work on. Well, Jones, last year, with the exception of Brian Anderson at center missing the Wake Forest game, Carolina pretty much had that starting veteran offensive line together the entire way through 12 games. And, and that means a lot. Uh, you've got that consistency. You've got that, uh, that glue with those guys playing game after game. But so far, Anderson has been in and out. Jordan Tucker has missed a start. Joshua Izudu has missed a, t- a start. So Phil Longo and Mac Brown both have talked about just – really need to get that continuity and get that consistency at the offensive line and we still don't know how far along that is brian anderson was not able to go much last week that prompted the coaching staff literally to have like a tryout at center for the the third team center which caden baker wound up playing a handful of snaps there in the first quarter last week kieron johnson really came on and played solid and was one of the players of the game on offense so he's going to get the start again today Elsewhere, just around the the rest of the offense, Jones, it's the offensive line. It's giving Sam time. It's the receivers getting separation. It's Sam making the right decisions, being confident. And Sam not trying to – I mean, he's done a great job running the ball, but let's not take a good thing too far and overdo it. Eight different Tar Heels played 19 or more snaps on that offensive line a week ago. And so there was a lot of mixing and matching and trying to see the best combination up front. As Lee referenced, we expect to see Q Johnson getting the start at center today. We'll keep an eye on that throughout the game on the rotation at that position. Brian, one thing that has been consistently off, uh, excellent on offense is Josh Downs. Through five games, the sophomore has 40 catches. That's tied for first in the ACC. An ACC leading 620 yards and six touchdowns, which is second best in the league. Absolutely. He's been consistently good, and, and he's Sam's go-to guy in crunch situations, especially on third down. So, uh, you know, we, we knew we had to find somebody to replace Daz Newsom. Check, right? All right. Now the question for this offense is, where's Deami Brown? And to me, that is the biggest issue right now, not having that long threat, that guy that can take the top off a of defense. But in terms of 
getting the ball to Josh Downs in space and letting him do his thing. Carolina has done a great job of that this year, and he showed up big time. And Mac Brown, Phil Longo, both uh, anticipate defenses now are going to double up on Josh Down. That's going to open up some opportunity for their outside guys. That's where Choffrey Brown, Antoine Green, Emory Simmons, yes. those guys have got to step up. And, boy, it really accentuates the loss of Bo Corrales this year, who uh, has been on the sideline uh, in, dress, in, in warm-up togs, uh, apparently no sooner – closer to being able to play and uh, if Carolina had his threat on the outside with his length leaping ability and ability to go up and get those 50 50 balls it could be a, a different offense so far it just feels like Chaffrey Brown could be that guy not just because he's Diami's brother but just the skill set is there the speed just getting him healthy getting some consistency from him feels like and there's others of course but it, gosh it feels like he could potentially fill that role that the Tar Heels are trying to do Brian. and and, let's, and, and, we, and we have to be uh, re respectful to the process too right Diami Brown wasn't Diami Brown in year one or year That's two right. you know he had to develop into what he was over the last two years so although we want them to be that right now you got to go through the process and the players have to learn how to play and kind of get a feel for the next level um, where they are from high school and uh, that production will come because, like you said, the skill set is definitely there. Lee, we're going to keep an eye on the weather today. It rained a fair amount in this area overnight. It's been a rainy morning, mostly just overcast at this point, although about 10 minutes ago we had a pretty good shower come through here and uh, get another douse of water out on the field. So not terrible conditions today, but less than ideal and something to keep our eyes on. Well, today is Exhibit A is where why Mac Brown, when he arrived here late 2018, early 19, was adamant that he wanted the grass surface in Keenan Stadium converted to the this artificial surface, the Root Zone 3D3 by AstroTurf. Uh, it stood up well in the Mercer game uh, two years ago. This would be the second weather game, and it, Mac just said, "I don't want a game affected by weather." And and. The playing surface in Keenan's team had really deteriorated because Larry Fedora's teams, when they before they had the indoor practice facility, was having to play games and practice in the in the facility and it become a quagmire. So good move on Coach Brown's part, and we're going to pay the benefits of it today if, in fact, we have more rain. Yeah, and just looking at the radar, I mean, it doesn't look like it's a, a real severe chance for either A, severe weather, or B, heavy rain. It might be a little bit here and there. Don't anticipate a major problem, but certainly something to keep an eye on as we go through this one. Another thing to keep an eye on, the Seminoles. We'll take a closer look at FSU when we return to the Reed's Jewelers pregame show from Learfield. Hey, Carolina fans. This is Kelsey. KJ, what you got going on, man? Fourth quarter. I ain't even gonna lie, man. I've been on s lately. For real. Yo, Nick, pass, make a I walk with a spot. I got what it takes to get to the top. The money I make, you cannot compete. They know that I'm getting a lot. She give me this phone. Give me that. It kind of that bitch. I'm getting a lot. I know she a thot. So give her a shot. And if he throws the ball to Luke, Morrison is heading down the field. He's gonna take it to the house. This is crazy. We ain't need kiss. I put some shit on her wrist. She was amazed walking the lowest match, flick of the wrist. Park the chop right next to drive, you can't even get this I gotta take a flick of this shit. I know my head to be sick of this shit. I put a wake in the morning, I look in the mirror, it's crazy, I'm really this rich. Seeing my children, they making my million, I'm really as real as it get. Kamari Morales for six. Hot in the Juve in 99, dripping the order my heel. Pull up and hop out the whip to a lot of eyes. I put it down for real, need some top dollar designer with joy five. Really like I gave him a couple tries, now I'm cutting tied. This is my life. Tipped and intercepted. Cameron Kelly with the pitch. I'm sick of these niggas. Put me in containment. Umbrella in the rose, case it rain. Going wherever the money takes me. All this forever, that'll never change. Don't think about it, but I miss up money. I want this spot. I got what it takes to get to the top. Chandler at the five. Chandler to the end zone. Down with the catch. Rips away from the tackler. But now Dow's off to the races. Weaved his way through the Blue Devils for the touchdown.
about here at Keenan Stadium as we prepare for Carolina and Florida State. Second consecutive year these two teams have met, but as we mentioned at the top, first time these two teams have met in Chapel Hill since 2009. First time they've met on a Saturday in Chapel Hill since 2003. We're talking almost 20 years since there's been a weekend game against Florida State for Carolina football in Chapel Hill. Speaking of the Knolls, they and the Tar Heels out on the field, at least a portion of the team going through warm-ups. FSU going with its traditional gold helmet with the spear on the side. Full white uniforms today for the Knolls. White tops and pants with the maroon numbers or garnet numbers is the official uh, designation for their color. Also a lot of gold in the uh, trim of those uniforms as well. Meanwhile, Carolina going with the white helmet today with the Carolina blue NC on the side. The Carolina blue tops with white numbers and the white pants with the Carolina blue argyle up the side. Carolina Florida State coming soon and Brian Seminoles have had another rough start to the season, filled with some mistakes and some close losses. They're just one and four through five games, but Carolina really only needs to look to last year. That result in Tallahassee to know that this Seminole team is plenty talented and plenty capable. Absolutely. We've seen this script before, right? And we hope the movie don't play out the same way. (laughs) And uh, Carolina, listen. For me, maybe I'm showing my age, but when Florida State come to town, this is a big game. Yeah. You know, this is a big game, and, and, and to see that uniform, you know, it's like when Carolina basketball rolled into your town. I don't care what Carolina's basketball record is, it's a big game for that team. So um, Carolina will be ready. Um, Florida State has talent. They have speed. They have a quarterback that can escape and make plays off script. Uh, they have running backs that can take it to the house from anywhere on the field. So Carolina is going to have their fair share of challenges today. And, uh, and I think they'll be ready for it. So I'm excited to see them. Talked about consistency. They have a great opportunity, even though the team doesn't have a good record that's in front of them. They have talent over there and guys that can make plays. Interesting element of the Florida State plight, plight guys, is that, uh, you know, the December National Signing Day took effect in December of 2017. So Willie Taggart came in in December of 17. Mike Norvell came in in December of 19. So each of those first recruiting classes for both those guys were almost punts, Jones. You know, they they weren't able in 10 days to get the guys they wanted. So if you look at two of the last four Florida State recruiting classes, have not been the kind that you want with the build-up and the work and the research that a, that a staff with some stability and continuity has been to put in. So that's part of the reason Florida State is struggling right now, Jones, is they've just not been able to recruit with that instability after Jimbo Fisher left. Mike Norvell has gone heavily to the transfer portal because of that. 13 transfers on this Florida State team that will play and contribute for the Seminoles today. Lee, uh, Brian mentioned... Florida State's ability to hit the home run by running the football. They can really run it. They come in averaging more than 200 yards per game on the ground. They have some dangerous players at running back and at quarterback that Carolina is going to need to try and corral today. Three guys to worry about today, Jones. Number zero is Ja'Shawn Corbin. He's number four nationally with an 8.13 yards per carry, and he's had three games of 100 yards or more. Running back Treshawn Ward is number eight. He adds more than 50 yards a game. And then, like we saw last year in Tallahassee, quarterback Jordan Travis. He ripped the Tar Heels for more than 100 yards rushing and two touchdowns last year during that very disappointing loss. He's averaging 36 yards on the ground as well. So now Florida State has played two quarterbacks all season. It's almost like they pick and choose kind of on the opponent week to week. Jordan Travis, the the redshirt sophomore who Lee mentioned Carolina saw last year, 191 yards passing, 107 yards rushing against Carolina. But also Mackenzie Milton, the Central Florida transfer, a story that if you follow college football, you probably have heard, had a devastating leg injury when he was at Central Florida to the point that there was conversations about potentially amputating his leg. There was that much damage with arteries and nerves, but he has defied the odds back playing Division I football. He has started three games. Travis has started two. You don't know for sure who will play today. You've got to think with Travis's ability to run, he'll be the first one that the Tar will see but we'll have to wait and see, Bryce. Yeah, and I think Carolina has a good, pretty good feel what they're going to get when each guy's in the game. With Milton in the game, they expect the ball to go downfield a little further. And then when, when Travis Jordan, when Jordan Travis is in the game, they expect more of the quick game and obviously getting him outside the pocket. And then you also 
obviously have to worry about him running with the football. Brian, one more thing before we go here. Florida State's defensive strength really lies up front. That's not great news for the Tar Heels. They've been stingy against the run and led by the ACC's leader in sacks, Jermaine Johnson. They frequently get into the opponent's back. And we talked about Carolina's struggle up front, you know, blocking guys and, and, and giving up pressures and giving up sacks. Florida State is going to give that offensive line all they can handle that day. And Jermaine Johnson is big, long, and he's fast. So it'll be a great challenge on the edge. He's one of those transfers we talked about. He's a transfer from Georgia. He is second in the conference with eight tackles for loss and leads the league with six sacks so far this season. All right, we're going to take a break. Come back. You'll hear from Jeff Saturday when we return. And Dave Nathan's going to take you the rest of the way through the Reeds Jewelers pregame show. Carolina, Florida State coming soon from Learfield. How are you the ultimate? Kenan Stadium for the Reeds Jewelers pregame show. Dave Nathan welcoming you back to business as we remind you that our official Reeds Jewelers kickoff time is coming your way at 335. Reeds Jewelers, your home for fine Swiss timepieces, beautiful diamonds, and the world's most luxurious jewelry brands. That's Reeds Jewelers, trusted with life's moments. We still have a lot to get to here on this afternoon's broadcast, beginning with Jeff Saturday, and we'll get to Jeff Saturday after this reminder from IHOP. Get 20% off a feast for pickup or delivery with code GAMEDAY20. Get your fill, Chapel Hill. Jones begins his conversation with Jeff after we pause 10 seconds for a station ID on the Tar Heel Sports Network. Game two of this three-game home game two of this three-game homestand for the Tar Heels comes this afternoon as Carolina welcomes Florida State to Chapel Hill. First time since 2009 that the Seminoles have been in Keenan Stadium. To help us get ready for that one, as always, is Jeff Saturday. Always have a great time, and we learn a little something when we chat with Jeff every single week. And Jeff, let's go back to last week. Carolina had what Mac Brown called its best defensive performance since he had returned to Chapel Hill. And on the offensive side, uh, an offense that's still trying to find its way a little bit, when, when you have a defense that is playing to the level that Carolina's defense did last week, how does that help you? How, how does that allow you uh, to maybe be patient or to call things differently? How does that help you as an offense when your defense is playing well? 
it's like your best friend, Jones, right? It's like you're chilling with your best friend when your defense plays like <laughs> they did last week. You know, it's like, I, and listen, I had some of those days in Carolina myself. You know, when I'd wait on B. Sims and them boys to take care of business, and we didn't always have to be our best on every single drive. <laughs> no, but it, it, in all honesty, man, like it, it, it is a, a, a warm welcome feeling from an offensive player, man. When you see that your defense is just stoning um, offenses the way we did last week, it gives you confidence to know – you don't have to be perfect. I mean, I know that you and I have talked about it many times. From an offensive perspective, when you feel like you should be a, a, a big strike or a, a big play offense and things aren't coming as easily, you begin to put a lot of pressure on yourself. But when you can allow the game to come to you, you don't have to press, you don't have to force and make mistakes uh, because you can really rely on that defense to do what it did last week. Man, it is I kid you not, bro. It is it is just like sitting and watching a movie with the best friend, man. Greatest feeling in the world. <laughs> <laughs> Jeff, Mac uh, Brown has talked about this, not just with Carolina, but kind of across college football this year. Outside of a couple of top teams, it just seems like you don't really know what you're going to get from week to week from anybody. Yeah. And then you'll have some great performances followed by some not as great performances. Well, what's the key to get to that? constant level and to be able to build off good things that have happened the previous week and then continue those good things on a week by week basis. Yeah, I, I think from, from my perspective, as I watch it, it's timing, right? It's, it's, it's continuing to build the timing of your football team. And so I, I give you a great example, like offensive, offensive line play. When a running back gets the ball, when he gets the ball handed, it's the timing of where you are in your block. And can you can, can you sustain that block for wide receivers and quarterbacks? You see it all the time. Does that guy come open at the right time when the quarterback's back foot is hitting it and can he deliver the ball? Uh, no different from defense, right? Can you fit in that gap at the right time when that hole opens up if you're a linebacker or break on at the right point? And so I think you go back to your techniques and fundamentals and you begin to say, hey, listen, the ebbs and flows of college football right now and to max points are all, all, all over the place. You don't know – if, if you're going to be, you know, if you're hitting your stride or you're going to be struggling with a team that you have no business really in a fight with. And so I think just going back into to the drawing board and understanding it's what we do, right, as, as the Tar Heels, what do we do today that makes us a better football team? And here are the things we're going to focus on. And it's irrespective of what they're giving us, what looks they're giving us, we have to work on this part of our football team and our game. I think that's really what, what Max looking for is, you build your own consistency because you develop technique and fundamental that shows up no matter who your opponent is. And I think that's what he's looking for. And, and to his point, really, besides, besides Alabama and Georgia right now, right. Everybody, everybody in college football is looking for it. Jeff, uh, Florida State plays two quarterbacks, but one of them is Jordan Travis, and he hurt Carolina a year ago with his mobility down yeah. in Tallahassee. He, he ran for more than 100 yards last week against Syracuse. We're seeing that now bleed over into the pro game a little bit more as well. Uh, guys like, of course, Lamar Jackson, Kyler Murray, and others. What, what are the challenges of a mobile quarterback when, when you're the defense trying to slow one of those guys down? Yeah, it's 11-on-11 11 11 football. And, and, and the reality is that even as you grew up, the majority of defensive players are accustomed to playing 10-on-11, right? That You kind of take the quarterback out of the game. Um, and, but when he is a true dual threat, and, 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 and the way that what you're talking about with Travis and, and different players, the ones you named in the NFL, it's they force you to have somebody monitor that guy throughout the entire play. So you, you, know, you can no longer kind of cheat your alignments. You can no longer kind of cheat your positioning and understanding that, man, if he takes the ball and there's an open grass on this side of the field, we're going to go find it. And I'll, I'll tell you, like, that's kind of been the Tar Heels Achilles heel a little bit, right, as these, as these mobile QBs. And so I, because, again, I think it makes you match up more and more. So what do you do? You, you make sure that the player who's assigned to the QB, that's his gig. And everybody else, you know what you have to get accomplished without using that, that, that extra player kind of in the box or in the defensive backfield spying somebody. And I think, but once you tag off on that guy a couple times, I say this to everybody, I don't care who you are in football. When you get hit and somebody you know is assigned to you and they make some plays on you, it makes you second-guess yourself. And so I, I think from my perspective, that's what I've always watched in football is make sure that guy knows I'm coming for you all day. You better be expecting it, and then, then it kind of equalizes itself back to what you, you originally want from a defensive perspective. 
Jeff, great stuff as always. Appreciate your time and your insight. Look forward to talking with you again next week and uh, can't wait to learn a little bit more from you. I oh, appreciate you, fellas. And go Heels. Go ahead, say something nice to me. Uh, you're the best coach ever. No, stop. I didn't say lie to me. I just said say something nice. Like you guys like this sun? I like this sun. It's, vit it's vitamin D. Yeah. It's good for you. Hey. How about this golf green we have right here?
sack to give back for every sack the Tar Heels make this season. Food Line Feeds will donate 1,000 meals to feed our neighbors in need right here in the Triangle. Carolina and Florida State going through pregame warm-up activities downstairs where Lee Pace is. And, Lee, questions abound. It seemed like week in and week out about the Tar Heels' offensive line and secondary. What do you see in the build-up to this one? Well, Brian Anderson will not start today. Q Johnson will get the start along the offensive line. Other than that, everybody is is showed up and present and accounted for along the offensive line. We'll see how well Q Johnson goes up. Going against big Robert Cooper, number 91, 335 pounds for the Seminoles. That will be one of the challenges. Fingers crossed that the weather holds up the rest of the day. Joe, uh, Dave, add flash floods overnight in the triangle area it cleared up a little bit the sun tried to pop through about an hour ago but then we had five minutes of a pretty uh pretty heavy downpour uh, just a little while ago so i'm ready to go with whatever the weather throws at us the tar heels have been doing wet ball drills all week the your running backs to help them maintain that football uh, if it does rain but right now it's just cloudy and overcast 66 degrees so so far so good with the weather dave that's Lee Pace down on the field with today's field report brought to you by Breakthrough Physical Therapy, the choice of North Carolina for keeping you in the game of life. After a break, Jones begins his conversation with Coach Brown in the Continental Tire Coach's Corner. This is the Reach Jewelers pregame show from Lee Field. We've came a long way. Reports indicate that Mac Brown is returning to Chapel Hill. It hasn't been easy. Now to growing concerns about coronavirus. George Floyd, Breonna Taylor. Through every sprint and set, we fought. Through the naysayers, the doubters, and all the talking heads who wrote us off. Through every sweet big one. Touchdown, Hello. Joy celebration. Touchdown, Carolina. Through every shadow and expectation. It's important Just a few years ago, we were on the afterthought. Brush aside, a non factor. Not anymore. journey is just beginning. This is the Reach Jewelers pregame show where it's time to send things over to Jones, who's with Coach Brown for this installment of the Continental Tire Coach's Corner, brought to you by Continental Tire, innovative technology, driving confidence for a dealer near you. Go to ContinentalTire.com. Inside the Continental Tire Coach's Corner, along with the Hall of Fame head coach of the Tar Heels, Mac Brown, my name is Jones Angel. Carolina preparing to face Florida State for the second consecutive season, but the first time in Chapel Hill since 2009. And, Coach, you've talked a lot about this year the lack of carryover from week to week, not just at Carolina, but in, in college football in general. You're coming off a quality performance. What, what has been the focus this week to try and find some of that carryover this week? It's so crazy, Jones. Last week, nine top 25 teams got upset. <laughs> Georgia Tech beats us the next week. They completely lay an egg and get dominated at home by Pittsburgh. Yep. I mean, it makes no sense. It's just crazy. So is it the transfer portal? Is it what COVID's done to college football over the last couple of years? Who knows? 
Who, who knows? I, I mean, if, if we knew that, we'd be doing something else and making a lot more money. We'd have more answers. But um, the, the thing we've got to do is keep improving. And that's a huge step today. We, we've had trouble with sacks. We've had trouble with penetration. Florida State's leading the ACC a number of sacks and, and tackles for loss. So that's a huge, huge burden for us today to overcome and see if we can get confidence moving forward. Our defense is playing much better. They've been bragged on all week. Will they step up against a very talented offensive team and stop the run where we gave up four of, uh, or we gave up 261 yards last year to this same bunch, 10 of 11 starters back. So uh, th this should be a great game and a fun one to watch. Coach, you mentioned that defense coming off a terrific performance against Duke. What excites you most about that group and what it currently is and, and what it can be in the future? Stopping the run, forcing turnovers. We forced two turnovers. We stopped the run early. They had some um, runs squirt through with Durant. Uh, we made adjustments. We stopped it. And, and then you start looking at third downs or two of 15 on third down. So when you're playing that kind of defense, Jones, that kind of defense wins games. We even scored on defense. Uh, and when you can make better decisions as a coach, when you can trust your defense, you can punt it and know you're going to get it back with good field position. So uh, you, you start being a great team with your defense. And, and we've been great on offense for two years. And we've struggled some on defense. We've been up and down. But this year, we're starting to be better on defense, and now we've got to make our progress on offense. Because you may answer this a little bit, actually, with that answer, but it, it is, the definition of great on defense has changed over the last 15 years just because of the way football has changed and the changing style of the game. What are some of those key factors that you look for if you consider your defense to have a great performance? Well, you... you you got to stop the run, especially on first down. You got to get them in second long, third and long. Get off the field on third down, like we've done for the last two weeks. Uh, force a turnover every now and then. That, that's uh, that, that's huge. Uh, but also forcing field goals. Don't don't yeah. let them score touchdowns in the red zone. And all that is modern day defense. Coach, you uh, talked about Florida State's prowess as far as getting into the backfield. Uh, you have freely rotated on the offensive line during that Duke game to try to find the most successful combination. Ideally, on the O-line, would you just go with five or would you rotate some during the game if you had things everywhere you wanted it right now up front? Jones, if we were healthy, we thought we'd have eight. And, and that's uh, even some guys to cross train and play both. But mm -hmm. uh, it's, it's been a disaster with health in the offensive line. You never know. And uh, we're just not going to talk about it because it's an excuse. And, and we got to move on. we got to play. They're not going to call a game off because we've got people hurt. But we've recruited for two and a half years. I've told the coaches, I don't want to hear about injuries. Take care of those young people. If they're not practicing and, and they, they can't live up to the level of play that we expect from them because of an injury, don't play them, but don't come to me and talk to me about somebody's hurt. Get somebody else ready to play. Carolina ready to play against Florida State today. We'll talk a little bit more about the Seminoles a little later in our pregame show. Here are Carolina's starters on defense. Rainbow Hasek, McHenry, Illinois. Miles Murphy, Greensboro, North Carolina, Delhi High School. Cayman Rucker, Hartwell Elementary. Chris Collins, VA Finals. Jamal Fox, Lawrenceville, Georgia. Jeremiah Gimmel, Minman, Georgia. Cedric Gray, Charlotte, North Carolina. Aquarius Conley, Jacksonville, North Carolina. Trey Morrison, Atlanta, Georgia. Kyler McMichael, Atlanta, Georgia. Cam Kelly, South Norfolk, Virginia. It's on the ground, 757, where the dolls at.
Tina Moments, presented by the Campaign for Carolina, creating opportunities for more Tar Heels. For years throughout the late 90s and early 2000s, university officials at Carolina avoided hosting Thursday night games for ESPN because of logistical difficulties in managing 60,000 fans showing up at a football stadium adjacent to a sprawling medical complex. But when Butch Davis took the Tar Heel coaching job in 2007, he lobbied vigorously for the university to figure it out and allow his football program to take advantage of a massive public relations opportunity and be shown to upwards of 4 million television viewers. It finally happened in October 2009. Florida State came to Chapel Hill for a Thursday night primetime football game. The Tar Heels made the most of their opportunity for two and a half quarters, taking a 24-6 lead behind the field generalship of quarterback T.J. Yates. Yates will give the ball off to... No, he's going to keep it. Rolling out. He's got the first down and the touchdown. Oh, my goodness. T.J. Yates faked the handoff. The stadium, the broadcast crew, the Florida State defense thought Ryan Houston would carry it, but he didn't. But a seminal interception followed immediately by a 98-yard scoring pass flipped the switch. Florida State stormed back and escaped Chapel Hill with a 30-27 win, certainly one of the highlights in Coach Bobby Bowden's final year leading the Seminoles. That's today's Keenan Moment presented by the Campaign for Carolina, creating opportunities. All right, it's 15 minutes to kick off presented by GEICO. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance. Mike Norvell is in his second season in Tallahassee and at 4-1, and one, or pardon me, at 1-4, and four, Florida State football isn't where it's supposed to be. Coach Norvell discusses where the program is. We're going through the process, and it is a... We're going through the process, and it is a, it's it's not what anybody hoped for. It's not what it, where everybody anybody wanted to be, um, but there are there are a lot of areas in our program that we're seeing growth, and it's it's not it's not showing up for three and a half hours of consistent play, and we've not done the things necessary to win those games, and it, and that is disappointing. Um, we've you know in three of them we we've had we've had the opportunity. I mean, Really, in all of, I mean, in three of them, we've had opportunity there at the very end to swing it one way or the other, and we just haven't been able to, to quite finish that. And so, um, we've got to continue to grow. We've got to continue to develop. I mean, I'm, I've got a tremendous amount of optimism about what's coming and the work that, because I guess all I can base it on is is what we're, what I see from our guys in the areas of things that we're we're asking them to correct, we're asking them to, to push. I mean, and. You know, is the is the consistency you know uh, where we need it to be? No, I mean it has to it has to grow to that. Um, you see that with a lot of moving pieces of, of what we're seeing within the roster. We're seeing that with you know some of the young guys that are having to play and, and having to merge it. But I'm, I'm also getting to see it with you know the response of, of guys that uh, that are playing their best ball and and they're getting they're getting better week in and week out. And so um, you know this team it, it shows up and it goes to work. Here are Carolina's starters on offense. Kira Johnson, Reesville, North Carolina. Easy, Atlanta, Georgia. Jordan Tucker, Roswell High School, and Crabe University. Austin Richards, Philly. Marks McKeithen, Baltimore, South Carolina. Garrett Walston, New Hanover High School. Antoine Green, Rockless, Florida. Josh Downs, Slimy Little Dude High School. Emory Simmons, AKA Zip Simmons. Todd Chandler, Montgomery Bell Academy High School. Sam Howell, Indian Trail, North Carolina.
Tar Heels. by the UNC Navy ROTC Color Guard. At this time, we invite you to join us as we are the United States of America and all the men and women who serve under the American flag by standing together and proudly singing our national anthem.
Please welcome today's virtual UNC Health Injection of the Game, Jonah from Wilmington. Brought to you by UNC Health, a proud partner of Carolina Athletics.